One human family, Kuiper Belt, one human family, Pluto. Funny, not everybody can whistle, and uh, and then we learn how. That's how that works. To the wo- to the moon, one human family. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Mongo, cha 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 cha, pa 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 pow. Greetings and salutations, future space explorers. My name is Mike Mongo, astronaut teacher. Welcome to Mike Mongo's Astronaut Adventures. And you are a future space explorer from planet Earth. One of the human heirs. You're a human heir. Rhymes with legionnaire, rhymes with millionaire, kind of rhymes. Sounds like, sounds a lot like legionnaire. You're one of the human legion. Traveling into the cosmos. Maybe to the moon, maybe to Mars. Maybe to the asteroid belt as an asteroid miner or professional Minecraft player. Like, what if Minecraft becomes a real job in the future? Like, not just a video game, but actual thing? Possible. So check it out. Look. Here's Earth, nice and blue. Here's Mars, kind of red. And here is the asteroid belt looking like a bunch of chopped peanuts. And it is not. It kind of looks like a, a, a donut in a way. And then over here is Jupiter... And then ba, 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 ba. in between Mars and Jupiter is the asteroid belt. And that doesn't look anything like that. The asteroid belt doesn't look anything like that. They are not close together like that. But, however, there is a gazillion of them, at least 100,000. And at least, there's probably so much more, so many more than that. And then, uh, and then you are going to grow up. And in your lifetime, we're going to be mining the asteroid belt. And you could work in the asteroid belt. And maybe Minecraft is going to be a real job, which is how I started this whole conversation in the first place. So, you know what today is? It's Monday, MiracleMonday.com. And you know what I need to do? I need to, my nose has got a little thing on. Uh, uh. You know, sometimes, funny thing, it's the masks. You know these masks that we're wearing for the pandemic? They make my they make my nose itch. I gotta put a little lotion on my nose. This this mask right here. Let's see. <laughs> journey with journey upstairs. Pow pow pow. So like this. So my mask right here gets on my nose and dries it out or something, makes it itch. This is my clean mask. I wash my masks. Of course I wash my masks. They go on my face. (sighs) (sighs) Remember the importance of breathing. Breathe in the good. (sighs) Breathe out the bad. You know, uh, we had a couple of astronauts return to Earth. Let's see. I know it's Colonel Bob, Colonel Doug. What's what's a Colonel Bob space X? Googling, Googling as we speak. Well, it's Colonel Bob Bank, and I know that, but it, it, it's it's um, Doug Hurley. Oh my goodness gracious! We 
Okay, so I'm in the United States of America, talking to you wherever you are in the world. A lot of people in the United States watching, a lot of people outside the United States watching. The United States is one place on this entire giant planet of ours. Well, it's not so giant, but to me and you it is. And we have two astronauts from this place, Bob Pinkin and Doug Hurley, and they were up at the International Space Station for two months. And SpaceX sent them up there. SpaceX, one of the private spaceship companies that you could work for when you grow up, if you follow this stuff that we've been working on for 45 episodes today. And then, so they went up to the space station and then they came back. This is the first time that a private space company has sent astronauts to the International Space Station using a private space company's spaceship, which is amazing which is very cool. So interesting thing about uh, uh, Colonel Bob and Colonel Doug is they both had son. They both have sons. And so imagine if your dad's an astronaut, as happy and as exciting as I thought that is, you, you, Colonel Bob and Colonel Doug were in a brand new spaceship, the Crew Dragon, though we have flown into space without people and back several times to test it out. This is the first time we had people in it. So there was precious cargo aboard that spaceship especially to their sons, right? And so there's amazing footage. There's like, the, the, it is the spacecraft drops out of the sky in, into the ocean. Like the parachutes are uh, holding the spaceship. It's dropping down into the ocean. The, the spacecraft lands in the ocean. The parachutes just chill out. And they look like jellyfish. They're gorgeous. And then they're collected by boats. The astronauts and the, and the spaceship itself which is not so big. It's not bigger than this. I mean, here in Spaceship Studio. So this is the size of the original Apollo uh, lunar lander. This this uh, blue shape that I have carved out right here with this blue line, right? So it's not. It's about that big. So there's there's two people on it, and drops into the ocean with it the, with these a massive parachutes that are so spectacular, and then boats come and collect it pick up the, the spaceship, and then uh, disembark the two astronauts alive and well and safely home from the International Space Station. And we did that yesterday. We succeeded. And when I say we, I mean all of us. Because when you succeed, I succeed. When I succeed, you succeed. And when somebody else succeeds, we all succeed. That's how that, how that works. And that's why we all, we all, if somebody fails, we experience their, their failure as well, as well whale of a tail we experience their failure as well and that and when we can feel how someone else feels that's called empathy now okay so here's an interesting thing so imagine i said imagine how it feels to be a son of an astronaut who's like like i think they're seven and nine maybe maybe 11 they're young and and your dad is up in space in a, un, in a new spaceship and first time landing with people in it and they land and gets home. How are you going to feel when you first see him after not seeing your dad for two months who's been in space on a new spaceship? You'd be excited. You'd be excited. Knowing how the two boys felt is called empathy. When you can feel how they feel, when they, you feel the excitement, when you feel the gratitude, when you feel the relief, whew, dad's home and he's safe. That's called empathy. When you feel someone else's feelings, and it's an important thing, empathy. Look, here's how you spell empathy. Empathy is going to be an important word for your entire life, so you might as well. It, 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 it's one of those words that we always use as human beings. And it starts with the E. M, 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 path, P A T H. You got path, P A T H, and then E is going to be a Y on this. Empathy, empathy. So wait, when you're empathic, you can feel how other people feel. Empathic, empathy. When and feeling how other people feel and thinking about other people's feelings is very much one of the keys to success for. By definition, for, for being a human being. Feeling, knowing how other people would feel or do feel, and being sensitive to other people's emotions and feelings is one of the key aspects of being a successful human being. 
And in order to be a successful astronaut, space explorer, human air, you, you, we get to be successful human beings. And which kind of leads into what, I was, what I'm planning on talking about today, what I've planned on talking about with you today. And, you know, sometimes we go this way and the, go that way, but there is, there's this idea that I generally have that I think this is something important to talk with, with you. I need to share this with you. So here it is. The opposite of mean, the opposite of mean is thoughtful. The opposite of mean, the opposite meaning the reverse or other side or the same but backwards, something like that, the same power but backwards, the opposite of mean. And we all know what mean is. It's kind of angry, aggressive, not nice, um, rude, disappointing, not disappointed, but when we are, if we're mean, we're being disappointing. The opposite of mean is thoughtful. And thoughtful means considerate, compassionate, helpful, empathic. When, you're, when you have empathy, you're N E M P A T H I T H I C. That would be emp- em- when you are a person with empathy, you are empathic. So if you're being thoughtful, you have empathy. You're, you're showing care and consideration for other people and their feelings. And, you know, feelings aren't the number one most important things in the world because sometimes feelings, you know this, feelings can be confusing. Sometimes we feel and we act a certain way because we can't express our feelings. There's too much emotion going on. So we act out or we, or we cause trouble or we cry, which is totally okay. I'm a big cry. I'm a cry guy. Or we, sometimes sometimes people, did you know that sometimes when people get too much emotion, they fall asleep? That can happen. It's really an interesting thing. Like it's too much, I got to go to sleep. Happens. That's how it happens. So the opposite of mean is thoughtful. How about that? The opposite of an itchy nose is a non-itchy nose. And you know what? Inevitably, when I'm doing that with my nose, what happens is that I put a piece of lint on my face. Let's see. There's got to be a towel in here somewhere. All right, here we go. Welcome to the lavatory. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Welcome to my underground lavatory.com. Welcome to my underground lavatory. Lavatory is another room for bathroom. And that's actually a bathroom because there's a bathroom there. And it's also a place to keep my towel so I can get that little piece of of tissue lint that gets on my face sometimes when I'm talking with you. And since I don't have a message machine around here, I don't have anybody telling me, hey, Mike, there's a piece of lint on your face, dot com. And so then uh, I, I have to be responsible for it for myself. I get to be. Because I'm thoughtful. I think that if I'm having messaging with you, if I'm talking with you and there's lint on my face, like if there was food in my teeth, or something like that. It's distracting from the important message that we're, this dialogue, this communication that you and I are sharing. That would not be advantageous to the cause. That would not be advantageous to the cause. The opposite of mean is thoughtful, and that's the cause. Being thoughtful. And here's what made me think of it. So, uh, my son Raphael, staying with his grandmother, uh, and I, uh, He's all caught up in his emotion. Like I said, we all get caught up in our emotion. It happens to all of us. Like right now, I'm caught up in my emotion and I forgot to put out the lights. So Raphael's caught up with his emotion, staying with his grandmother, and uh, and he gets frustrated. And then um, And then what happens is he says something not nice to his grandmother. Not terrible. Not terrible. Not like he just said something, and he said it in a way that came across as thoughtless, inconsiderate, and kind of mean. So he and I had to talk about it, and it worked out. And they and they made up like no problem. They weren't really not made up. They just needed to be addressed because we don't want we don't want to be rude to people. We don't want that to we don't want that to. 
to be, we don't want people to think of us that way. We never want people to think it happens, but if we can avoid it, we don't want people to think of us as thoughtless. Nearly always, we want people to think of us as thoughtful. So, um, Raphael, I got to share that with him and got to explain back to me what he was going through because that's what communication is. Like when you're having an experience and I'm witnessing it, I don't know what you're going through unless you tell me. So you know how sometimes we have so much emotion that we can't even talk? You know how frustrating that is for grown-ups when, when a student has so much emotion they can't even talk? Ugh. That is a challenge. And we're like, use your words, use your words. We say that all the time. You'll hear us say it. Use your words. And it just means express yourself. And you can even say, I'm so angry. Ugh. And you're like, okay, cool. See? It feels better to say it. And you're like, wow. It does feel better to express my feelings instead of like, they're my feelings and they're so sensitive and they're just like precious. No. No, you have, if you feel love, I feel love. If you feel pain, I feel pain. If you feel happiness, I feel happiness. If you feel joy, my favorite. If you feel joy, I feel joy. Any emotion that you feel, I know how it feels. I don't know the intensity that you're feeling it. I don't know the, the, the experience of that feeling for you. But I do know that if you're having a feeling... I also, as a human being, know about that feeling. It happens. Lint. So, if you feel anger, I know what that is. I've been angry. Every emotion that you can experience, a grown-up has had or has experienced. There are some situations that for you would might be unique. Unique meaning just for you. Like, just the way things unfold. You know, every day we wake up, get breakfast, handle our, our uh, bathroom responsibilities, and then start the day. That's pretty much the same for everybody. But for some people, it's different. What about people who work at night and sleep during the day? So instead of getting up and having breakfast, they might get up and have dinner. I don't know. Like, there's, there's different ways of looking at, at things. Being considerate of those different ways of looking at things is what it means to be thoughtful. When we are angry or hurt and we use our words to hurt other people, that's being thoughtless. In a relationship, and you and I have a relationship. You and I have a relationship. You're listening and learning, and I am speaking and teaching and I learn from your learning. And you teach me from my teaching. I always say that if you're, if, in order to be a good teacher, I have to be a good learner. So for you to be a good student, you get to be a good teacher. That's just how it works. If you're learning, you're teaching. And if you're teaching, you're learning. If I'm learning, I'm teaching. And if I'm teaching, I'm learning. Always. Crazy, huh? So... When I am, when you and I are communicating with one another, you'll message me on Instagram or um, uh, Chester's creating a Discord. He has really uh, done a great job helping to, like he, he, was a, he was the one that's been pushing for Discord. So our friend Chester is, is in the UK, is uh, helping with the Discord server presently. And we'll have that up and running. And that's going to be an opportunity for us to communicate with one another. One another. Me and you, and also you and the other you, the other, other students watching this right now. And that way you guys, you guys, you folks, you folks, you, you crew, you click, you all can communicate and, with one another and support one another. Like this is a group of people who are planning on going to space. And you're part of this group. And having friends and allies and accomplices... To support that dream and vision is essential. It'll give you a critical competitive advantage. So for anybody else who wants to go to space but isn't doing the work, you're going to have an advantage just because you have allies and accomplices and friends and, 
and people that support your dream like you're going to support other people's same dream. Maybe to be the first kid in space. This, in order to make this happen, we get to be thoughtful. When we're dialoguing, have you ever seen people be rude to one another online? Not just in person, but like say rude things. How about the people that would say something online that's rude because they don't, because they don't think that the person can find them or see them or know them or they think that they're anonymous? Think that that person, when people are mean to other people, un, anonymous means unknown. Like if somebody is, is messaging online with you and you don't know who they are, like it's just like it could be um, uh, Boss Juan 2929 uh, exclamation, exclamation point, exclamation point. Boss Juan 2929 exclamation point, exclamation point. Who's that? We don't know. But you ever had somebody or write, write a mean comment underneath something you did online, even though you don't know the person? I don't do mean to people because I don't like mean done to me. But there's more, there's even a bigger thing. Watch this. So with Raphael and his grandmother, I got to, I got to say to him, Raphael, never make the last thing you said to somebody be something mean. Because what if something happens between the, that time and the next time that you see them? Like I have known students who said something mean, so help me goodness, to somebody that they love. And it turned out to be the last thing they said to them. Cause it's life, you know, things happen. It just does. I'm not worried about that. What I'm worried about is going through life with the knowledge or memory that the last thing I said to a person before something happened was something mean and that would just be terrible for me like oh man so you see how my face just changed and lit up the last thing that I got to say to my mom was that have I told you I love you today and she said back to me like a million times and I have it on video. It was, I was just smart enough to push the button at the right time. For no reason except that I love my mom. I didn't know that that was going to be the last time I saw her. And that is the thing that I got. See what happens when we practice being thoughtful instead of mean? I mean, there's no reason. Like, what if my mom and I had argued about something? Like, I didn't want this kind of ice cream because we were getting ice cream. What if it, what if, but by the grace of good, because I'm grown up and I practice the same thing that I'm sharing with you right now, I learned to say something nice. Not just fake nice, but from my heart. When we come from our heart, it always works out. Which leads me to this next topic. Oh, by the way, Raphael cleared up with his grandmother, and so they're all they're all kumbaya again because she thinks he's the best. She loves him, his grandmother Fanchon, and so uh, his, his he he knew he knew my mom of course, Nana Mindy, and and uh, she loved him like like ice cream, <laughs> and and, uh, I, and uh, I think I'm talking myself out of the ne- the next topic. What was the thing I was going to tell you? So uh, we were we were talking about. <laughs> remember, I did this last time. <laughs> Talk about being thoughtful and being considerate, and uh, always making the last thing you say to somebody something. Oh yeah, nice. There's a difference between nice and kind. Nice can be fake or artificial. You know what saccharin is? Saccharin is like sugar that isn't real sugar, so it doesn't have calories, and it has a sweet taste, and it doesn't taste exactly like sugar, but sometimes we eat it, especially if we have health issues, like we can't eat sugar because maybe we're diabetic or something, or that we're working. Some people use it at, at, like if they want to uh, adjust their weight. So uh, 
like, um, what is fake nice? Fake nice. Well, if you have certain feelings, if you're upset or if you're not feeling like you're being understood and someone says, are you okay? And you, and you say, I'm fine. I'm fine. It's kind of not, it's not mean, but it's also not like, it's not really you. And we want authenticity. That means the original you, the one that you're in charge of. We want the real you. We want the real, we want real, real love, real humans, real fun, real joy, real feelings, real thinking. How to be helpful. How can I be helpful? How can I be helpful? That's the thought that I want you to keep on thinking. And like in any situation, always think, how can I be helpful? And so if you're being thoughtful, being thoughtful means how can I be helpful? Thinking, how can I be helpful? So for me, we're like, how can I get help? How can I, how can I, what, how can I get the best thing for me? How can I do it for me? How can, how can I be number one? How can I, how can I get on top? How can I get over everybody? I don't care about anybody else. I only care about me. I don't care about, how about this one? I don't care about you. I don't need friends. How about that one? Oh, those are sad. <laughs> Usually we say stuff like that when we're unhappy. When we're unhappy. When we're not filled with joy. When we're sad or when we're angry or when we're hurt. And maybe we're hurt because someone else wasn't being thoughtful. Or maybe we're hurt because we're being maybe too sensitive. Maybe we don't understand what someone's doing and we're misunderstanding. We're thinking that they're being mean when they're not. Like you ever had your parents tell you to do something that you didn't want to do and you thought they were being mean? And then it turns out, oh my gosh, they weren't being mean. They were actually looking out for my best interests. Well, there you go. There you go. I have people who want to argue with me. I have people... Look, if you're a space scientist, trust me, and that you've seen all the YouTube videos where people say that the moon, the moon landing was fake. The moon landing was fake. The moon landing was fake. That one. Like people have gotten like, oh, I have even had somebody argue with me and I, I didn't even know them that the earth isn't round, that the earth is flat, which is just so ridiculous. It's silly, but they were getting upset. I mean, oh my Google, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever if you ask me. But there you go, that, that really happened. And, and, like, if I was mean to them, like, that would, that would, how would that serve? How would that serve? Would they become smarter because I was mean to them? If I said, you're stupid, you're stupid, you think that? That's your thinking? That's your belief. You, I think you're stupid. <laughs> I've heard I've heard people say that to people before. I don't think that that's the helpful way. I just don't. I don't think that's helping the world become a better place by telling anyone else they're stupid, even as a joke. Like sometimes we joke around with our friends. What if we joke around with somebody who's not our friend? Like you're stupid. Like sometimes we say it, we don't mean it, and then they hear it, and then that person thinks that you think or I think that they're stupid, and then they feel bad because they think we're trying to make them feel bad. You ever had that happen to you? I've had people say stuff like that to me, and I'm like, oh, that didn't make me feel good. And that's why it's important to be thoughtful. Even if, even if, oh, it reminds me, something I want you to say to your parents, or your guardians, or your uncle, or your aunt, or whoever's taking care of you, because somebody is. Um, even if um, someone is mean to us, it doesn't mean we, we need to be mean back. Just because someone is mean to you does not mean you mean, need to be mean back. It's, I'm not expecting you to get this right from the very beginning. I'm not expecting that. It takes work to get this stuff. You think that I learned uh, that I knew automatically to be thoughtful, not to be mean? Oh, no. No, no, no. I have a friend in, from college. And, um, oh, boy, what's his name? Almost got him. And I was mean to him once. I just said mean words. And, and I, I, I'm 55, and that was 30 years ago. And more than 30 years ago. 
And I still, I'm like, wow, I love you, man. And I am sorry that I ever said anything rude to you. And, and, uh, and I, I haven't, I haven't said his name or thought his name in so long, but whenever I do, I feel bad that I had ever said anything mean or rude because that's not how I want to be remembered. So, um, we were, he wasn't even being mean. So that wasn't even, that was just me being mean. And I learned from that experience. He taught me then that it is mean to be mean. It is bad to be mean. It is unacceptable. I don't want to be the thing that makes me hurt. I want to be the thing that makes me feel good for other people. Like when I'm having a conversation with you right now. Because I care about you. I want to be that. I want to be that for you. I want to be. I get to be that for you because I work at it and think about it. How am I helping you? That really matters to me. And and because I want you to be. I want you to be helpful. Like I want you to get the message right now, so you don't have to go through the stuff that I went through. It didn't need to go through that. It doesn't have, we don't have to do it the wrong way. We can see that, oh, that's the wrong way. Like we learn from other people's mistakes. That's the best. Oh, so you know how I just said about, um, um, don't make the last thing you say to some, someone be mean. Don't do that because you never know what could happen next. And you don't want that to be the last thing that you said to somebody like literally, Here's another one. Tell, this is a challenge. This is so hard. (laughs) I'm cracking up. Look, it is not easy to be you. It is not. And I want to give you a, a, a challenge. I'm giving you a challenge. You ready? This is a good one. Tell the person that you love, not like a girlfriend or a boyfriend or somebody you have a crush on, The person who is, like, there's different kinds of love. We'll talk about that someday. Tell the person who takes care of you and who you appreciate for taking care of you, it can be a mom. It can be a dad. It can be a stepmom. It can be a stepdad. It can be an aunt, aunt. It can be an uncle, tia, tio. It can be a a grandparent, a grandmother, a grandfather. It can be an adopted parent. Same as a real parent. Same, exact same thing. Same as a real parent. Real parents. It can be any parent. It can be somebody who takes care of you. It can be somebody who's just taken you in because you needed to be taken in. I, like, oh, wow. Thank gosh for the people that found me when I needed somebody in my life. Like, I went through tough times when I was you. And there was all kinds of grown-ups that stepped in for me, stepped up, took me, took me in and, and, and wrapped me in love and support, responsible love, like held me accountable. Like just because you've been through bad times doesn't mean you get to be bad. Just because you've been hurt doesn't mean you get to hurt others. Held me accountable. You have the strength, Mike Bongo. You have the strength. You have the strength of character. I always talk to Raphael about having have a little character. You have the strength of character. You have a good heart. You can feel how it feels to hurt or feel good. And you want other people not to hurt and to feel good. So here's the challenge I have for you. Tough. Oh, it's so tough. Tell the person you care about, who cares about you, that you love them. That is a tricky thing. Especially when we're, when we're, when we're you. It is not, it's not something when, when, when we're you, no, when we're you, when we're you, it is not something you, we do automatically. Some of us do. Some of us are more evolved. Some of us get it immediately that it's okay to tell people it is better than okay. It's the best thing in the entire world. When we speak from our heart, excuse me, when we speak from our heart and tell the people that we love, that we love them. It is a powerful thing. And you know, we're so goofy. We are such good, good, goofy humans. It, it takes us a while to learn how important that is. 
I, it taught me a while. It took me a while to teach Raphael that it is okay to tell people that you love them, who you love. When you love somebody, it is genuinely good. It is thoughtful to tell somebody who you love that you love them, not someone that you have a crush on. That's different. I'm talking about somebody that who loves you as a, in a parental sense, who loves you as a as, for the person that you are. Not, they don't want anything from you except they, like me, I want you to be the best person that you can be. I want your dreams to come true. I want your dreams to come true. I want everything that you want for yourself to come true. And I want you getting the, all of that to help make the world a better place. When you're happy, everybody's happy. When everybody's happy, you're happy. It's just how it works. So you think about the people that take care of you and who care about you to say thank you. Oh, wow. What a challenge that is. It is a challenge to say thank you. Again, there's another one I trained Raphael. How to say thank you. How to say please. What a beautiful word. Please. Please, may I? Please, may I? Thank you. To say yes instead of sure or yeah would you like some would you like something to eat sure like you don't care or yeah like someone's serving you when you say yes it shows appreciation respect and honor yes please yes thank you yes i would thank you yes i definitely would like something to eat please thank you <laughs> so you get to do, you get to practice this stuff. You get to, you get to like, but practice it. Don't practice it like you want to practice it. You're going to practice it. There's going to be something that you're going to practice. So eventually you'll practice it. Practice it now. There's no time like the future. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's no time like the present. There is no such thing as the future. The future is like a, something that we imagine, we hope for. We're not guaranteed the future. There's no such thing as the present. So I want you to practice. I want you to practice feeling good and and uh, and helping and helping and being thoughtful and seeing how your actions and your words have an impact on other people in the same way that other people's actions, like my actions and my words, have an impact on you. It's really very simple. It's it's uh it's pretty amazing actually. So let's see. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty much the most important thing. Like the opposite of mean is thoughtful. And I want you to, I'm, I'm challenging you to thoughtfully communicate your feelings for the people who care about you to them. I'm, I'm challenging you. Ch I'm challenging you. I'm challenging you to communicate your gratitude and your appreciation for the people in your life who support you and take care of you. That's a good way to put it. I'm challenging, I'm challenging you to communicate gratitude and appreciation to the people in your, in your life who care about you and who support you and who take care of you. Breathe the good in. Let the bad out. It's funny because it only takes, it's, only, it's really simple. You just do it. It's a funny thing about the tough things. They're usually only tough until we do them. When we say, I love you. And mean it. It's challenging. And then we do it. And then we became good at it. It's like anything. Anything worth doing is hard. And anything worth doing takes practice. And the best time to start is today. The best time to start is today. You better write that down. The best time to start is today. Let's write that down. You know I like to write anyway, so I don't even, like, it's not even a big deal. It's like, <laughs> I'll, I'll write it in red. This is, this is a red letter day. Even though, we're, look, I'm not mad at the word mean. It's in, the, it's in red, but I'm over here writing something important and beautiful. The. Best. Time. To start 
is today. Whatever your dream is, whatever your vision is, whatever you want to learn, the best time to start is today. The best time to start is today. Got it? So remember, the best time to start is today. The best time to start being thoughtful. The best time to start thinking, how am I helping? How am I helping? How am I helping? Whatever situation in, you just look at it. Before you think of anything else, how am I helping? That's the, I, you take that approach, you cannot help but succeed. You cannot help but succeed. Whenever you walk into a room, how am I helping? Like, is your being cool helping? Is your, what, if, what if we're loud? What if we're a loud person? Hey, everybody, I'm here. Na, 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 na. Well, is that helping? If it's a party, it's probably helping. You're probably getting it lifted up at the party. <laughs> Let's get this party started, right? Let's get this party started quickly. Exactly. So how am I helping? You can, you can, help, you can help at a party. You can get a party started. Po, po, pow. I'm, in, I'm enrolled. You're getting a party started? Awesome. I'll follow, follow you. Lead the way. Drive on. When, uh, when people are singing happy birthday, I told you how I sing happy birthday. I don't sing happy birthday to you. That's like a funeral song. I'm like, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody, including you and me. Happy birthday. Can't you see? It's a place to be. What time is it? One, two, three. My son, my, uh, my, my uh, watch has got a little boom, 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 heartbeat, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So that's your challenge. Should you choose to accept this mission? If you really want to be a space explorer, if you really want to, if you think you're a human heir, if you are not able to say, I love you to someone, maybe you got, maybe, maybe, maybe you need to think about doing something else then. Because the most important thing is to be able to communicate Honestly and genuinely, our feelings and emotions, who we are to other people, our experiences to other people, is the most important thing about being a human being. Love is the whole purpose of life. That is why we're here. So if you're not doing that, that's the thing to work on. That's the thing to work on. And if you want to be a successful astronaut, space explorer, human air, be a successful human being first. Remember the... Well, we got all kinds of stuff to write down today, don't we? The, this lesson right here. The formula. Not a lesson, the formula. The human air astronaut training formula. Learn skills. Practice manners. Whoops. Take action. Get resolve. Resolve means determination. And I could say be teamwork. Be teamwork. Be teamwork. People say learn teamwork. Get skills, have manners, take action. Find resolve and be teamwork. Smart. S-M-A-R-T. Smart. That's the formula. That's our formula. That's my, your formula. That's our formula. We own that. That's us. That's us, the human heirs. Our insignia. Heartwing star. The mark, the symbol, the insignia of the human heirs. It's yours and mine. You're a human heir, I'm a human heir, that's us. Heart, f wings, imagination, creativity, flight, star, bright and shiny, inspiring others with our love, our passion, our joy, our experience, our learning, our resolve, we keep on going, we keep on hitting, and we keep on going, and we keep on going. Fist bump. Boom, boom. That's what I'm talking about. That's what this is all about. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here. That's why we're doing this. 
I'm proud of you. I wish I was you when I was you. you. The amount of character you have, you're showing just by being here. I'm proud of you. I am so happy to be able to say to you, I love you. You see why I love you now? You see? You give me reason to. You make me proud. I respect you. I look forward to watching you grow and succeed and fail and learn from it and take that forward. That's how awesome you are. You're going to do that. And you're going to fail at doing these things and you're going to learn from that and you're going to carry that forward. And then when you get to be me, hopefully you're going to find other students just like yourself and you're going to walk them through the process. And your experience is going to inspire, inspire them. And that inspires me now. How could I not love you? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing the future and it is awesome. That's why I say you are awesome. You're awesome. If you have any doubt about that, that's not on me, that's on you. And if you have a doubt about it, I don't think it's on you right here. I think it's on you up here. And I give you permission to tell that voice that has any doubt that you are awesome, that Mike Mongo says you're awesome and people don't pay him to be wrong. You keep up the good work. I am proud of you. You are awesome. I do love you. Share the people, share, share your love with the people that you love. Share your love for them. I challenge you. Get out there and let people know who, who care about you, that you care about them. What a beautiful world we're creating. A space future with you in it. Keep up the good work. And, and hopefully me too. <laughs> and I'll see you in the future. In the words, I'll see, I'll see, you, I'll see you on Friday. In the words of my people, in the words of our people. Here we go. Are you ready? Pow, pow, pow.